Welcome, Speaking of Language listeners, to the 13th episode of our 13th season. We thought it would be a fun end of semester treat to talk about the significance of the number 13 in cultures around the world. Angelica, did you, uh, growing up in Germany, have any superstitions around the number 13? You know, Sam, not really. I was surprised when I moved to the U.S. that there was no 13th floor in buildings, mm -hmm. no hotel room 13, no row 13 on flights. Right. But what I do remember much more about growing up in Germany and the number 13 is that you turn into a teenager. Uh huh. That was indeed a fun birthday for me. And since we are all about words here, if you parse the English word teenager as a German word, it becomes Nager, which means gnaw of tea, like as a gnawing tea. How odd is that? Gnawing, like a like G-N-A-W, yeah, like a beaver exactly. would gnaw on. Yeah. Fascinating. I mean, of course, it's an English <laughs> word and it's still teenager, but I right. remember the birthday card I received from my parents had a bag of tea in it. And my mom wished me a happy <laughs> gnawing tea day. Very good. Anyway, how about you, Sam? Well, uh, part of my family is Jewish, and in that culture, 13 also is not unlucky, mm -hmm. but it's significant. 13 is the age of bar or bat mitzvah when you become an adult. Um, but I also grew up obsessed with Halloween and <laughs> horror-related nonsense. So, yeah, Friday the 13th and all uh, that. Uh, yeah. Why is it that Friday the 13th is considered particularly unlucky? Probably because the franchise lacks a cohesive artistic vision and every sequel descends further into self-parody. Oh, you mean the actual date of Friday the 13th, uh, uh. not the movies. Why is that unlucky? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, well, I, I did look into this, and there doesn't seem to be a consensus about the exact origins of that superstition. Hmm. Um, but as far as 13 being unlucky, a lot of scholars point to Christianity. Um, but in both Christian sure. and Norse mythology, the 13th guest at a dinner was a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Judas sure. betrayed Jesus after the Last Supper. Uh, and in Norse mythology, a Loki was the 13th to arrive at a feast mm -hmm. in Valhalla, uh, where he tricked another attendee into killing the god Baldur. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that happens in any of the Thor movies, but mm. but uh, that's that's how that story goes. Yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> Well, I am told one lucky thing about Friday the 13th is that you can often get a discount for booking a wedding venue on that date. We love a bargain here on Speaking of Language. Indeed, we do. Some other superstitions regarding the number 13. In Mexico, for example, some people also believe that 13 is unlucky, which may date back to Mayan and Aztec traditions. In Mexican culture, though, Tuesday the 13th, not Friday, but Tuesday, is the ominous combination of days. Uh, uh, and I will also share this this tidbit that in the United States, after the near catastrophe of the Apollo 13 mm. mission, NASA stopped numbering its space shuttle <laughs> missions. Um, and in 2006, I read that Brussels Airlines changed its logo so that it would be made up of 14 dots mm. instead of 13 um, but and also, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. like many other airlines, uh, there is no 13th row of seats on Brussels Airlines yeah. flights, or at least th there wasn't as of the article where I looked that <laughs> fact up. Do you know the word for the fear of the number 13? Triskaidekaphobia. Wow. Say that again. Triskaidekaphobia. Thank you for saying that and for learning how to say it so I didn't have to. Hear. Certainly. Some of the countries where 13 is a lucky number include Italy, Spain, China, Egypt, and some regions of India. Uh, and some numerologists, at least according to the internet, which, as we know, is always right, yep. uh, see 13 as having strong vibrational energy uh, and as a signifier of change. I can see that coming from you know 12-inch rulers, 12-hour <laughs> measurements of time, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm also told it's blessed with Divine feminine energy. We should all be so lucky. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but Sam, we have left out one very significant global culture that sees importance in the number 13. Uh, and what's that? Taylor Swift. Wait, I'm sorry. 
So, Tay-Tay, born on December 13th, 1989, Lady Taylor turned 13 on Friday the 13th. Her first album went gold in 13 weeks. Five of her songs so far have peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. And many of her songs have 13-second intros. She says it's her lucky number. It seems like you know this all too well. Anyway, we hope you all have enjoyed our bonus episode about the number 13. This brings our 13th season to an end. We'll return in the fall semester with new topics and new guests. In the meantime, you can check out our back catalog of episodes over the summer. Please take care of yourself and those around you. Until fall. Auf Wiederhören. We'll be back. The Language Resource Center is located on the ground floor of Stimson Hall on Cornell's main campus in Ithaca, New York. Check us out on the web at lrc.cornell.edu. And follow Cornell LRC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Speaking of Language is produced by Angelica Kramer and Sam Lupowitz. Recorded by Sam Lupowitz. Original music by Sam Lupowitz, Dan Gable, and Joe Gibson. Thanks also to the College of Arts and Sciences at Cornell University. As a reminder, the ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect those of the College of Arts and Sciences or any other official entity of Cornell University. We thank our listeners, and do stay tuned for our next episode.